Today's topic is youth ministry as a lifestyle versus pop-ins on Wednesday nights. Whether you lead a small group or you volunteer at youth group, you don't have a lot of time in the year where you really interact with a student. Let's say you volunteer at the midweek program at your church. You say hi as they come in, you have some small talk with a couple of students, then you sit by them during the service. You may even be on a team with them during a game. Your youth ministry may even break out into small groups for a portion of that time. For numbers sake, let's just say you have 30 minutes of connection time with your students. September through May, minus Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's, that's 35 weeks. Add that up and you have 17 and a half hours in a year. Now that's a best case scenario right there. Every group is different, so there's no exact science here. I'm just trying to give you an example. You may have the first Wednesday off of every month for a volunteer meeting. That takes out nine meetings right there. You just move down to 13 hours. Take away time to get settled down and get into the conversation. You're now maybe at 39 minutes or so. I'm just kidding, sort of. But how do you maximize your impact on a student's life? I am not saying that small group is bad. It's very good. As a matter of fact, I would say it's extremely important. If you're not doing small groups in one way or another, I want you to consider how you could incorporate that into your ministry without taking another night away from your family and putting too much more onto your calendar. That being said, I believe we need to some time outside of youth group time and small group time to really connect with students on a deeper level. Years ago, I sat with my friend Jeremy Williams, who is a Young Life leader, and we talked about with ministry. Now, Young Life has this concept down like no one else I know. Basically, when you're going to go do something that you would be, would be just as easy to do with a student, call them up and take them with you. Are you going to buy groceries? Why not call up a couple of your students and ask them to go grocery shopping with you? I remember when I had to stain my fence in my backyard. I called two of the guys in our youth ministry and I asked them if they wanted to come and help me stain my fence. They were both excited to come and help me and do that. It took a couple of hours. It was hot. We drank tons of lemonade and we told stories, we laughed, and we shared some serious stuff. Plus, I got my fence done way faster than I would have on my own, and it was way cheaper than if I'd hired someone. This is a no-brainer, folks. Now, you can do that with something that you love to do as well. What, what is it that you love to do? Name it. Right now, right where you're at, turn to the person to your right or to your left and tell them what are the top one to three things that you love to do. All right, I'm going to give you each, we'll have five seconds or so, so name them fast. I'm going to wait 10 seconds. Do that right now. Okay, that's your 10 seconds. Bring it back together. I hope you shared some good stuff. Now, imagine inviting someone from your youth ministry to join you in on doing that sometime. Do you love to fish? Take a couple guys fishing with you. Do you love to make pottery? Take a group of girls and make pottery. Now, I'm not trying to be sexist here. I'm just giving examples. Are you a photographer or a videographer? Do you love to skateboard? Do you like to read books? Do you sail? Do you cross stitch? What do you love to do? Can you invite a student or three to join you sometime? You would be amazed at how a shared experience will create a memory that you will always have and you can build your relationship off of. Yes, by the way, I did say book reading. I know that is not necessarily an active activity, but you could grip, bring a group of students together to read a book and then spend 30 minutes discussing it each week. Now, I want to encourage you to make sure that you check with your youth pastor and or their parents to make sure that the book you're reading is worth the read and is also okay. The bottom line here is that you can make a deeper impact on a student's life outside of youth group time than you can inside, typically. This is not discounting youth group time at all. Don't hear me wrongly here. Youth group is extremely important, period. And outside activity is extremely important. I'm not asking you to do something that you would necessarily add more time into your schedule. I'm saying these are things that you're already doing. Why not invite a couple of students to live life with you? Let me share some other benefits of living this way. First of all, students see you in your normal environment. They get to know the real you outside of church. Secondly, they may have an opportunity to see how you interact with your family. Now that's a good thing. 
Students need to see healthy family relationships. Many don't have that example at home. Now, side note here, if you don't have a healthy family relationship at home, you may want to consider stepping out of ministry for a while and focusing on building and restoring those relationships. That being said, you don't have to be perfect. Be yourself. They can spot inauthenticity a mile away. Take the opportunity, if you're married, to show off your marriage. Another benefit, it opens the doors for deeper conversation because you are not on church turf. That's a huge thing. Another benefit would be that you get help with whatever it is you're doing, like my stain fence, my fence staining. I got help in doing that. I didn't have to do it by myself. Now, these are just a few benefits. I'm sure there are tons more, but you get the point. Make ministry your lifestyle without adding more weight or guilt for not spending enough time doing Bible studies or whatever. Don't be just a pop-in volunteer. Add to your, your breadth and your availability and your ability to reach into these students' lives. Love Jesus and live Jesus.